So in this video, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over uh, what I think, in my opinion, is the best way to make a header navigation for a website. So 90% of the projects you take on, probably as a freelance developer, uh, in terms of front end, will require that you build a navigation. Obviously, most websites have them. So it's a one, one thing, probably the first thing you learn in front end development is how to build this. But not a lot of people look at how they're doing it and sort of make tweaks to it over time. Because in my experience, what I've found is when you're new to development, when you start watching tutorials, the guy that you learn from the most is probably how you're going to do things. So if, if the guy you learn from um, uses spaces instead of tabs in CSS, for example, then uh, chances are you're going to do that as well. Um, and that's not necessarily the right way to do things. Um, but not a lot of people look introspectively at like what they're doing uh, and make changes. So what I did uh, this past weekend was I spent some time looking at the more common things that I build and a navigation came up and I built this every single day for different projects that I'm working on. And then I realized like, in my opinion, like there is a best way of doing this. Um, and when I say best way, I mean, it's really quick to build. You can build this navigation in, you know, a couple of minutes if, you're, if you get really good at it. It's scalable. It's really good for scaling the website up and down which I'll show you in a second but also if you're working for a client and he says can you make the navigation bigger or smaller this enables the whole thing to be really really scalable um, and you might already know this like you might build it exactly the same way I'm about to do it which is fine that's good but uh, if not I think that it's probably a good idea to, like to have a look at it and just sort of compare it to how you do it and you might have a better way and if you do then definitely please leave a comment and um, but with that like I want to start off so we start off in this video with what we always start off with a blank uh, HTML skeleton and all I've done is I've included a style sheet which just links to style.css which is in the CSS folder uh, and in my style sheet I've got some default styles so the asterisk uh, means the asterisk even means apply this to everything in the document and I've got margin zero pattern zero list style zero and te text uh, text decoration none uh, so the way this is is that it, there gets some defaults when your html skeleton like it puts a, mar a white margin all the way around the outside uh, and it puts some default things on list items and things like that and all this does is means that we start with a completely blank canvas so i would suggest that you do this as well um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a div class of header like seems pretty obvious this is the outermost um, div and we're going to come in and style it and what we're going to do is the styles that this needs is width 100% height i'm going to use 80 pixels but you can use whatever you want um, and you'll see how you can change this in a second to whatever you want um, and display block um, and then i'm going to do background color hash 10 10 10 which is like a charcoal -y sort of off black which i'll just show you now looks like this very nice already uh, and what we're going to do is uh, inside of our header div we're going to create a div with the class of inner header and this is again going to make it more scalable for us in the future so we're going to set the width to a thousand pixels the height to 100 percent display to block and margin zero auto so all this is going to do is make it a thousand pixels wide the whole height of our header and display block and margin zero auto will center it horizontally within the page and i give this a background color of red which is really horrible but this is a really good way to see you know what impact it had on the page so it's just a red centered block here and inside this is where we're going to put all of our other elements so often the left side of the navigation bar will have a, a logo if you consider facebook youtube most websites do this where the logo of the company is in the left corner uh, and my logo is it can be an image but i'm going to use a font and on, i've gone on to google fonts here and i found montserrat which is a very nice font so i'm going to just include that in at the top underneath my style sheet uh, above my style sheet sorry uh, and then what we can do is we get uh, i'm going to create a div inside in a header with the class of logo container okay and then inside this i'm going to create a h1 tag which is a header big header tag and then I'm going to do my, I'm just going to do the logo my site. And then I'm going to put a span in here. And then I'm going to type site inside here. And all this does is it lets me style the word my and site differently, uh, which I, I do want to do. Uh, so I've got uh, my logo container here. And I'm going to style it. Uh, and the styles we're going to give this are, um, we're going to say height 100% of inner header, which is the 100% of our header. And we're going to display a table and float it left. Uh, so the reason we're displaying a table is because the elements inside it are going to be displayed table cell and vertical align uh, vertical aligning center with tables is unbelievably easy and it works on old versions of internet, internet explorer new versions of like chrome and firefox so the reason i think this one of the reasons i think this is the best way to do it is because it's the most universally uh, accepted way of doing it there are other ways of centering things vertically i've made an entire video on it that you can go and watch 
um, but this is the most stable and uh, backwards compatible way of centering vertically that I found personally. Um, okay, so that's our logo container, and you notice we put a H1 inside it, so we can style that now. Oh, um, and the styles that we're going to give this are, let me see, so our H1, we want to colour it white so we can see it, and we can see if that's made any impact on the page. Yep, there it is up there, all really ugly in Times New Roman. Um, and now what we're going to do is, we can say, yeah, uh, colour white, I want the height to be 100% of our whole thing, and then this is the, the, the uh, how we centre it vertically, so we're going to display table cell, oh, table cell, and then we're going to vertical align middle, and you can see already that this will centre it um, into the middle of the page, into the middle of our uh, header, so this is, a, uh, this is going really well. Uh, and I'm going to give it the font, I'm going to use our font that we found earlier. Um, and then I'm going to say font size 32 pixels. So that's how it looks now. Looks a lot better, uh, but it's all bold. So like to make it look more like a logo that someone would actually use, I can take this, copy it down, and then define the span that we made, the word site inside of, and just say weight 800 pixel, 800, sorry, and then the weight of the word my is going to be 200. And then look, obviously now it looks more like a logo, like that someone might use. Um, so we're like more than halfway there. All that's left to do now is the navigation part of it. Uh, so you can your users can navigate from place to place. Uh, so inside in a header still, but outside of the logo container, we're going to do a UL, which is un 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 uh, an unordered list, and give it a class of navigation. Uh, and we'll do all the HTML for this really quickly. So it's going to have an A tag because obviously you probably want it to link somewhere. And then inside we need a separate tag. I'm going to use list item because our navigation is an unordered list. And I'm going to say home is to page is page one. I'm going to add a, a couple of uh, like demo pages in here. We have home about um, portfolio and contact. There's some just common um, tabs that you might have on your portfolio. Okay, so what we can do now is we can style the navigation. So the only style that this needs is um, float right and height 100%. Um, and now we can copy the name. So we've got uh, the A tag inside of this. So we can do navigation A. Uh, and then we're going to set height to 100%, display to table, uh, float it left and padding, uh, oh, float left and padding uh, zero pixels because it's already centered vertically on top and bottom and then 20 pixels on the left and right. You'll see that it looks like this. All at the top of the page still, you know, we're getting to that. And now the reason that we put the LI tag inside of the A tag is so that we can really easily see here, we've got A tag and then also an LI tag inside it. This is done so we can really easily um, center it. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to save this and then LI, target the LI tag inside the uh, anchor tag. I'm going to display it, uh, table cell, and then vertical align middle again. Uh, we use this pretty often, and now you can see that it's probably centered it. There we go, so it's all in the center of the page. Um, okay, so now we're getting pretty close to the end. It's really simple, like if you know what, what we're doing, this is really simple. We're gonna set the height to 100%, color it white, and then these are just stylistic things again. Uh, we want Montserrat, and we want it to be uh, about 16 pixels. Okay, so now we can look at this now. Okay, so you can see it's starting to look good. We've got this bit of spacing at the end here where it doesn't quite touch it. And uh, what we could do to fix that is just a really quick, um, I think it's called a pseudo selector, uh, which means that we can type navigation A and then target only the last child, which is the last um, element with inside it. And then we can say padding, right, zero. And all this does look like it makes it touch the end now. So now everything is sort of perfectly touching the sides. And now we can get rid of this ugly red color in the background. Um, here delete that and then save and now obviously you could that's the a header like you could use that on a website uh, i think it looks pretty good and the reason that i've even bothered to make this video is uh, about something that seems so obvious is that this is the best version of a header that i could arrive at um, after diff testing different things um, this is the best one this is the most scalable and the most responsive so you get a message back from your client saying the header looks really good uh, the problem is, uh, I kind of wanted the header to be a lot bigger, a lot taller. What you can do is, really easily, you can just change the height to whatever you wanted. Like, you never want it like that, but you see how, with inspect elements, as you make it bigger and smaller, you can see that all of the elements stay centered perfectly within um, the containers. And then, uh, as you scale the page down a little bit, maybe you want to scale it down, 
um, and then when you get to like here what you can do is you can get the inner header and you see here it's a thousand pixels wide and then when we get down to where it's just touching the edges um, like here what we could do is um, we can change the width of the inner header to 800 pixels for example um, and it pushes it in more uh, or even better if you wanted to set it to for example 90% which makes it 90% of the page width that means it's responsive all the way up all the way down you see it's still touching the edges and nothing's like overlapping nothing's falling underneath itself everything's staying like nice and uniform um, inside of the inside of the page and this obviously uh, is something you can do as well uh, you might need to add some media queries because obviously this looks a little bit in my opinion looks a little bit strange um but that's the whole reason i made this video is that this is the best version of a head that i could come up with um i challenge you to do it yourself look at things that you build every single day and just look and go why am i doing it this way is it because it's the best most efficient way of doing it or is it because this is how i was taught to do it when i started to make uh, when i started to make websites and um, so i think that's it for this video um, please leave a comment and let me know if you think I should make some more of these sort of shorter, more simplistic videos. Uh, and just as a final message, I do encourage you every single day, whenever you're making a website, any element that you build on a regular basis, try and make it the most efficient code, as short as possible, but also try and make it the most responsive and it'll cut down your time in scaling the website and um, cut down the actual time it takes to code it. So thanks for watching this video. Please like, leave a like if this has helped. Leave a comment. Let me know if you already knew this or if this was new information to you. And definitely leave a comment if you have a better way of um, building the header. Uh, so thanks for watching this video. I hope to see you back on the channel again for the next one.